Mr. Speaker, earlier this week, I spoke on the connection between comprehensive immigration reform and the crisis that we have at our border. And I said then, and I'll say it again, it's the height of hypocrisy to be talking about trying to do something about our border security when we can't even bring comprehensive immigration reform to this floor. Citizenship, defined as the status that entails the specific rights, duties, and benefits given by a country to an individual is the final step of the legal immigration process. Since the country's inception, the legal immigration system of the United States has continuously adapted through legislation to the evolving situations of the country. However, our current legal immigration system is inherently flawed. In a recent Harris poll, 63% of the public supported Congress in taking up an immigration reform proposal. And while the system should be relatively straightforward, Problems still tend to arise. USCIS has a history of chronic management problems and processing delays. Between fiscal years 2016 and 2018, the overall backlog of delayed cases exceeded 5.69 million. So what specific aspects of the current immigration system keep it from being completely effective? I think one way they could change the immigration process is to make it a little bit more simpler. It should not be such a difficult process that everyday people have to spend thousands of dollars to hire attorneys to figure out how to deal with the immigration process. So one of the flaws that the system currently is experiencing is just the sheer volume of people applying that the government does not have the manpower to efficiently process the sheer number of applications that are coming in. One of the most influential positions in the U.S. government is the presidential office. But what powers of the president can be used to affect our immigration system? So under the executive branch, um, you have the Department of Homeland Security that um, houses Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is you might know as ICE, um, and also Customs and Border Protection, or CBP. Um, the executive branch also houses the Department of Justice, which contains the immigration administrative courts. The president, who obviously is the leader of the executive branch, has power in a number of different ways, just as that individual person. The first is that obviously he gets to appoint the leaders of all the different cabinet agencies. Those things matter because it's then those individual heads of agencies and all of the, the many hundreds of thousands of people under them who are actually on the ground making those policies and making the decisions that impact people's lives. The executive branch can only do things that are based on the laws that are already on the books. They cannot create laws. They cannot create new policy that is outside of the framework of the current laws that are on the books. As such, every year Congress passes the spending bills that give certain allocations to the executive branch to execute our immigration laws. You may remember the Harris poll shown at the beginning of this film. And its significance is that the controversy regarding the U.S. immigration system isn't whether our immigration system needs to change, but rather what the change should look like. But even though the general public believes that immigration reform is necessary, what does comprehensive immigration reform ideally look like? The policy change would be how people are going to come to the United States, the systemic change is how we're going to execute the new policy. However, underneath the scope of policy, there are two concepts facing one another, merit-based versus family or asylum-based immigration. But if these concepts are so contradictory, what should the primary focus of our immigration system be? For so the past several years, we've looked at bringing families back together, refugees, asylum. That was great for a time. But moving forward, I think we really need to look at a mix where different aspects of the economy and the population make up. And they look at the United States and say, hey, you know what? What do we need right now? Well, maybe we put in a, a mixture where we have family reunification as one percentage. We have refugees, asylees as always as part of it. But then maybe we put in a merit-based system. If you think you can positively affect and contribute to the United States, why not? Why not bring in the best and the brightest from around the world? That way we can be true leaders in the world. I think we need to look at immigration from a different perspective and take it away from just looking at it from the individual level and take it to a national level. So I am of the camp that believes that our immigration system is 
absolutely broken. On the humanitarian side, we need to spend a lot of time undoing what this administration has done in terms of asylum protections. All of these programs requiring people to return to countries that they may never have lived in. They're contrary to international law and they're just not the America that I think most people think that we want to be turning our backs on people who really need help. And I would say the same thing about refugee admissions. We're at the lowest number of refugee admissions in the history of the program and that's something that we have to get back up because we're part of a worldwide community and we need to be able to be a safe haven for people. Overall, our immigration system is a complex and divisive issue. But if the problems within our current system are to be solved, the fundamental question for the presidential candidates is this. What will you do for our immigration system? To acknowledge reform and balance the essential aspects of a working, legal immigration system.